In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to do an image transfer using fluid matte medium, a laser print on regular photocopy type paper, nothing fancy here, laser print or photocopy. You could use an inkjet print, but you have to be very careful what to use. Do not use any kind of coated photo paper. It has to be kind of a matte paper revealing paper, the thinner the better. And you must make sure that your inkjet inks are actually pigment based and not dye based. Pigment based inks will not run under with water, but uh, dye based ones will. So if you have to use inkjet, know your materials before you try this process. Um, I've elected to print using my home black and white laser printer. You could uh, use a colored laser printer if you prefer. So that's my original print. I'm going to transfer this image onto a substrate, in other words, onto another material. And in this case, it is a kind of paper that will accept acrylic paint, so I know it can stand up to some moisture because there is moisture involved in this process uh, with water. And of course, there's the fluid medium. And you could also use watercolor paper, wood panel, canvas, primed or unprimed, and any other number of surfaces. So that's the substrate. And effectively what I'll be doing is I will be adhering this print face down on top of my substrate using the fluid matte medium to adhere the two pieces together. Other tools that I need, uh, in this case you could use scissors or a blade, so I'm using an X-Acto blade, snap-off style blade, a brush for applying the fluid matte medium to my print. You could also use a foam brush. I have the fluid matte medium. It does not matter the brand. Some people also have success with Mod Podge. There are many ways to do image transfers. The method we're using today um, is probably the least expensive of the bunch. Um, and some of these tools can be substituted. Another tool that I use that not everybody has access to is a brayer. It is a hard roller and it's meant for printmaking. And um, the reason you use a brayer or some other tool that allows you to uh, press hard against the paper, I could even use the edge of this knife later. I'll show you what, what I mean when I get to that point. Uh, or you could use a credit card, a debit card, or any other kind of hard edge card. Another tool that I really like to use is a sponge. This one has the green scrubby side to it. You do have to be a little bit careful if you're going to use the scrubby side. I like to use the yellow side but I am tempted and sometimes use the scrubby side as well. Uh, and that's to add moisture to the back of the paper after um, this is a much later step but later on you will be removing the paper from your laser print, your original print, off of the substrate you're transferring the image to and uh, the sponge will help to speed things up. You also need some water. Not very much water at all. This is a big vat. I also use it for my plants um, and I'm going to move that far away so I don't accidentally knock it over. We'll be revisiting that. So the brayer or some kind of tool that you can use as a squeegee a brush or other applicator for applying the liquid me uh, fluid medium rather matte medium or gloss medium fluid is the important word uh, matte medium is kind of preferred because otherwise the surface of the substrate will have a shiny kind of appearance when you're done so first thing I'm going to do is clear the deck And you also, you might be looking at my word here and thinking, kind of recognize what that word means, but it looks backwards. Well, I'm going to be gluing this image down, face down, on another substrate. So once I've removed this paper, from after I've done the transfer, the word will be the right way around. If you forget, and you print your words, if you have word in the image you're going to transfer, make sure you flip it. We're going to be very disappointed unless you want your words to be backwards. Okay, 
First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off all the excess white because we're going to be removing all of this paper and leaving just the toner and some matte medium behind later on. First of all, I don't want to waste matte medium. And second of all, that's an awful lot of excess paper to, to smooth away later on. So might as well get rid of it now. And I'm going to follow roughly the shape of the words like so. I'm just cutting off the excess. I could get really finicky and detailed, but it actually wouldn't be to my advantage later because once I've put the medium onto this page, if I cut away too much, like I'm always tempted to cut into here and here and here, but I'm going to leave those because if I cut away too much, the paper is going to be very hard to place on the substrate. So I just have one more little cut to make. And I'm just going to get this out of here. I don't need it. Now, I've decided that I'm going to place this word roughly in the center of my substrate. And um, I'm not going to mark it out. But if you had really critical placement, you want to make sure your word was ex or your image is in exactly the right spot. You could now take a pencil and make tiny little marks so that you know where to position the paper after you've applied the medium to it. So the next stage I'm going to do is apply the medium. And I'm going to put down a piece of waste paper here first. Because I don't want to get glue or medium rather all over my cutting mat. All right. So I'll move it over a little bit. I'm going to squeeze some of the fluid medium right on to the paper. And brush it on. So I'm going to try to do a pretty good coating, good, pretty good even coating. I don't want to miss any areas or it won't adhere properly. see how flexible this piece of paper is becoming as it gets soaked with the medium. I'm just going to check and make sure I've got good coverage. I have good coverage. Okay, so move this out of the way. And now I'm ready to place this down. I'm going to try to get the center to go down first. And then I'm going to smooth away from the center to prevent air bubbles. I can do this first part with my fingers. But this is a pretty critical step here. We need to make sure, first of all, that there are no air bubbles. And second of all, get my brayer. I am going to squeegee the heck out of this to make sure that my print is completely sticking down to the surface of the substrate, the paper that I'm transferring it onto. And if you had a material like canvas, you might want to put some of that medium on both the canvas and on the print before you adhere the two parts with each other. Now I'm just going to keep going around and around and around making sure that I have really good coverage. And the other tool that I was mentioning you could potentially use after I put the blade away is to use the edge of something like this. If you don't have a brayer, you don't have a hard squeegee, You can use the side of something flat and smooth like this. It's not cutting into the paper at all. It's not too sharp. 
And I think I've got really good coverage going on here. If I lift it up, I don't see any air pockets or anything untoward happening there. And the best thing I could do for myself right now would be to put this away until it dries and come back and then the next step would be to remove the paper from the substrate, the material I'm transferring this image to. So we'll come revisit this later. Back a few hours later, the medium has dried completely. I don't feel any coolness or dampness through on either side of the paper, through the paper. And um, if I hold it up, I can see that even the edges have glued down quite nicely. Uh, there's one little one here sticking up. And I can see that there's one spot of the toner that did not glue down onto the substrate, onto the paper below. And uh, that's okay, because you know, this is often a flawed process. And in my own method of art making, I don't mind dealing with problems because it makes me come up with creative solutions. So I'm just going to grab my trusty sponge here and I'm going to dampen it. I don't mean soak it. I mean dampen it. Oh, see, it's just barely wet. And I'm squeezing out most of the water. I'm going to dampen more of it. You could also use a spray bottle spritzing, just misting, not soaking, but just misting the paper. The whole idea is to dampen the back of the paper layer and you'll start to see what happens as it gets damper. The image underneath, in my case it's text, the image underneath becomes more and more visible as the paper gets damp. And the reason I don't want to soak it is first of all, I, I'm a little leery of uh, reactivating the matte medium that's acting like the adhesive here. I don't want to make it gooey because then it'll just lift the whole print right back off. What I'm trying to do, the whole point of this, is <clears throat> to get the paper to start to ball up so that I'm removing the photocopy paper and leaving behind the matte medium and the toner trapped on the surface of the substrate. Now this is a painstaking process. You shouldn't rush it. Um, it can take quite a while. And you'll see that I'm slowly but surely revealing the image underneath. And the technique that I use is just to remove as much as I can so that it, I feel like I've removed the whole layer and then I let it dry. So you can see all the little balls of paper that are coming up. And the paper that I'm removing is from the photocopy or the print rather that I made, laser print. And you can see why it's a good idea to use thin paper thin printer paper and not deluxe beautiful thick paper because it would take you that much longer to remove it. Well, after a while I'm going to give up on the sponge completely because the sponge can go too far too fast. And on this end you can see why it's important to cut away the excess white paper like I did at the beginning. So all around the edges here, if I'd had the full square or full rectangle letter sized paper, I would be having to spend a lot more time removing the printer paper. And I've <clears throat> switched to my thumb. I've switched to my fingers and thumb because I have a better tactile feel for it, right? It's more immediate. And I've removed so much of the 
printer paper at this point, I'm getting a little worried that I will start pulling up the underlying paper, the substrate. I don't want to do that. Just get rid of some of this. This is always a messy process. Sort of like if you have a Christmas tree in your house, you keep finding needles for months afterwards. Well, this process is kind of like that too. Normally I'd put a piece of paper underneath to protect the board, but <clears throat> But you can see as I'm revealing the image that was printed on the f printer paper, we're starting to see less of a haze on it, right? They're starting to see some density in the black, the darkest areas. That means I've removed quite a bit of the printer paper at this point. Soon I'm going to just let it dry again and come back to it. A couple of problem areas, like down here, I'm a little concerned that I'm going to go too far, so we'll definitely let that dry before I tackle it again. So we're back. This is what the print looks like, uh, the transferred print and there's one area here that I'm going to work on a little bit just needs a tiny tiny little touch up but the rest of the areas have come out quite well and I am going to leave them alone of course once you start it's hard to stop right you always feel a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more but there's enough of this image showing through. It looks great. And now I'm going to start applying some color. I'm not going to take you through that whole process, but just to show you some of the things you can do with this. Another thing I would suggest is that as you apply color, if you're going to apply a color on top, it would be to build up slowly because the whole point is not to obscure the image below, but to enhance it. Yes, you can apply color on top as I'm doing. Uh, you can use inks as well. You can also use acrylic, but I would thin them down an awful lot because otherwise you're just going to obliterate, obscure, or cover up the underlying image. And you don't want to do that. Otherwise, what's the point of making the transfer in the first place? So just to give you an idea of, of where this is going, I'd show you a, just a little color application and um, another method you could use would be to stain the paper or the, the material underneath. You can paint it with acrylic, maybe with a light wash of acrylic and then apply the image transfer over top. Sticking with light colored backgrounds or substrates because uh, the color of the substrate is going to be the color of your highlights. So the brightest area, this is white paper, so my highlights are going to be white if I was using a dark gray. My highlights would be dark gray and this transfer would not be very visible on top. So always a better idea to go with lighter colors in the background and add afterwards. And there's tons of information online as well. So in addition to this video, many, many resources out there. So try a transfer, have fun with it, and a little bit of frustration, no doubt. Um, but I think you'll love the results and you may just get hooked on this process.